Hello, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Another Godfrey's Parlor session. I'm your host, Dina Hall. I'm coming to you from my home right here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And tonight, from somewhere in America, we're going to present to you Chuck Brodsky for a live stream concert coming to you. In addition to this one hour performance, we'll also include the opportunity for you to add comments and ask questions. And true to Godfrey's form, we'll take a short break at the halfway mark. At that time, we'll spend a few minutes chatting with Chuck. One important reminder, all of our live stream concerts will benefit the artists. So please use the link provided on screen and in the comments to pay what you will. We're going to put those links up frequently in the comments. We'll put a few of them on the screen. The ones that are going to be in the comments section will be clickable links. So you can um, just click right on there and uh, you can purchase CDs. You can also find a way to purchase the digital downloads through the link that we'll give you as well. We do encourage you to pay what you will on this because we are bringing you these live stream concerts in an effort to help support the artists who are not able to go out and tour at this point in time. That's it for now. It's time for the music. Won't you please welcome Chuck Brodsky. Good hey, evening. Chuck. Hi. Hi. How are it's good you? to see you. Where are you? Where are you today? Asheville, North Carolina in the Blue Ridge Whoa. Mountains. Oh, look at that. How beautiful. Yeah. Hey, you got your Phillies gear back there. I do. I'm a lifelong Phillies fan. Grew up in Philadelphia. Very cool. Die hard. Ah. Well, we're welcome. We welcome you. We're very thrilled to have you here. And uh, I'm going to get out of the way and let you play some music for these folks. All right. There you go. Thank you. Great to have you joining us tonight. Uh, of course, I'd much rather be in Bethlehem at Godfrey's in person. But since we can't do that, this is the next best thing. And so I'm awfully glad you're here and I'm awfully glad I'm here. I'm gonna start with a song about a fella that I met outside the gates of the Kerrville Folk Festival in Texas. It's an 18 day long folk festival. And I went down, uh, I've been 18 days many times over the years uh, in the olden days. And about 25 years ago, I had a girlfriend named Annie and we drove down from North Carolina together and we stayed all 18 days. So we there came a point where we needed to buy some groceries in town, replenish our supplies, maybe do some laundry. We headed the 10 miles towards town, but just as soon as we pulled out of the festival, we saw a man over by the side of the road selling peaches off the back of his truck. Now, we all know about Georgia and South Carolina peaches, but Fredericksburg, Texas peaches, they are the best. We had to have some. It's a very hot day, and all we wanted to do was buy these peaches and get in the air-conditioned vehicle, get in our way again. But the man selling them was one of those people that liked to talk and talk, and he just kept going off on tangents after tangents. And I started to take baby steps backwards towards the car, as you do, hoping he'd read my body language. But he didn't. He just kept walking with me towards the car and talking and talking until out of nowhere, he apologized because he had not introduced himself. And that's a Southern thing. So he told us his name was Bill. I said, Bill, very nice to meet you. I'm Chuck. This here's Annie. And he said, Annie, huh? I had a woman in my life once named Annie. And he started telling a whole new story. And I'm sure I raised my eyes. I'm sure I sighed very deeply. But something changed and in the tone of his voice or the look in his eye that said, pay attention. And I'm glad that I did because he told me this. Stop for peaches, little roadside stand. Man said his name was Bill. Said I'm Chuck and this is Annie. He said Annie was the one and only true love of his life. They met at his wedding, but by then he had a wife. It was during the reception. Spring of 64 She, his newlyweds best friend Followed him out the barroom door Maybe his ring got smaller Maybe his finger swelled Maybe he made a big mistake Maybe time would tell Feel what I feel, and he said, I do. 
When Bill was at a loss Wondering now, what should he do? He did what he had to He'd just taken a wife She would take good care of him For the rest of her life Bill and Annie fought the urge They saw each other off in she was there in black, the day Bill's wife lay in her coffin. By then she'd gotten married, by then she'd moved away. She'd asked Bill for his blessings, he said it was okay. So I taste the peaches And they cut us each a slice They were a little on the small side But they sure tasted nice Do you think I did the right thing, Bill asked Though I knew he knew So I answered with a question Asked them, Bill Do you? He said, Annie Pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you, Chuck. Nanny and I, we drove away in Annie's pickup truck with a box of 20 peaches, a homegrown tomato, too, and a couple of things to think about. And every now and then, I do. I do. So I've written a lot of songs about baseball over the years. It was not something I ever initially intended on doing, but one led to two, two led to four, four led to eight, eight led to 16. I'm up to about 26 right now. I have two entire albums called The Baseball Ballads, volume one and two. And here's a song that's off of that first one. It's about a pitcher by the name of Doc Ellis, who on June 12th, 1970, Threw a no hitter, which is pretty, uh, pretty eventful in and of itself. But what makes this such an unusual story is that Doc Ellis took LSD before the game. He actually had taken it the day before, stayed up all night, took more in the morning, and then that's when uh, it turns out he did not have the day off that he was thinking he had. So they had to get him a flight from Los Angeles to San Diego because he was scheduled to pitch that evening's ball game and he threw that no hitter and this is a true story it was a lovely summer's morning an off day in LA so thought one Doc Ellis see what later say his girlfriend read the paper, she said, Doc, this can't be right. It says here that you're pitching in San Diego tonight. You got to get you to the airport, so off Doc Ellis flew. His legs were a little bit wobbly, and the rest of him was too. Took a taxi to the ballpark an hour before the game. Gave a half-assed explanation, found the locker with his name. The organ in the upper deck. Played all the schmaltzy hits. You could hear it in the clubhouse while Doc was getting dressed. His sunglasses he reached for from his locker in a case. Doc Ellis put his jersey on and he put them on his face. The time came to go on out there down the corridor. The walls were a little bit wavy and there were ripples in the floor. He went out to the bullpen to do a bunch of stretches. Loosen up a little, throw some warm up your chest. All rules for the national anthem. People took 
off their hats. Fireworks were exploding and the cokes were already going flat. Crop was back there in the dugout. So many things to watch. Some players spit tobacco juice and others grab their crotch. And the umpire hollered, play ball. And so it came to be. Ducks Pirates batted first when they went down one, two, three. Ducks Ketchum put his mask on and he handed to the ball and it was 327 feet to the left and right field wall. So Ducks Pirates took the field then and Ducks stood on the rubber and he bounced a couple of pitches. He bounced a couple of others. He might say about that day that it looked a little wild. The lead off that trembled, nobody knew why. Doc Ellis smiled. We walk in, you hit a guy, all the things that people shout. Especially the manager, but he did not take Doc out. Doc found himself in rhythm in a crazy little spin. Amazing things would happen when Doc Ellis zeroed in. Sometimes he saw the catcher, sometimes he did not. Sometimes he held a beach ball, and other times it was a dot. Doc was tossing comets, they were leaving trails of glitter. In the seventh inning stretch, he still had his no hitter. So he turns to cash his buddy, says, I gotta know no going. Speaking the unspeakable, he goes back out there throwing. Bottom of the ninth, and he stood high upon the mound. Three more outs to go, and he'd have his name in Cooperstown. First up was Conazaro, and he flied out to Lou. Then Kelly grounded out for Dean, and the shortstop yelled, that's two. Must have been a madhouse, fans upon their feet. The little ones among them were standing on their seats. Well, that would have brought a purple, but it's easy old pinch hit. He took a third strike, looking in officially, that was it. It was a lovely summer's morning, an off day in L.A. So thought one Doc Ellis, see later say so uh, back in September I had the privilege of touring Denmark uh, at a time when all of my fellow musicians were shut down and I had been shut down since March but I had this tour that had been in the works for well over a year and a half at that point and the COVID situation in Denmark back then was very stable very few new cases per day that's changed unfortunately but there was this little window where I was able to go over there and do this wonderful tour and the whole time I was there people kept coming up to me and asking me what the hell is going on in the United States? And I had to I had to explain. Everybody wanted to know, and here I was, the representative from the United States, and all I could really tell people was that half the people in the United States are absolutely crazy. And the other half are completely out of their minds. Well, I look in the rumble And the other half were spoiling for a fight The logic that they're using is all jumbled But who needs facts when you know you're right? Well, half the people nowadays are bonkers And the other half have all gone insane Everybody everywhere looks angry And they need to blame somebody for their pain Now half the news you get today is phony And the other half you get today is fake But what's real is the independent journalist Who gets tortured but refuses to break 
people have lost their marbles And the other half have all lost their minds On top of that, we've become so heartless And underneath it all, we must have lost our spines Well, half the people are just plain cuckoo And the other half are just plain looney too Bite your tongue, you can't talk sense to any of them They hate you when you burst their balloons Now half the people have gone crazy And the other half have all gone mad Well I could make a fortune selling bridges If I hadn't sold the last one that I had Half the people have no idea And the other half they haven't got a clue They'll believe anything anyone will tell them Unless it can be proven to be true Half the people are just plain cuckoo And the other half just plain looney tunes Bite your tongue, you can't talk sense to any of them They hate you when you burst their balloons Now half the people are talking rubbish And the other half are all just talking crap You've got to be careful and remind yourself Not to take the bait, step into the trap Half the people nowadays are bunkers And the other half have all gone insane Everybody everywhere looks angry And they need to blame somebody for their pain Half the people are just plain cuckoo And the other half just plain looney too Bite your tongue, you can't talk sense to any of them They hate you when you burst their balloons They hate you when you burst their balloons So that was a new song. I uh, just started to do a little bit of recording. Uh, don't know where that's leading. Now is not really the best of times to try to crowdfund for making a new uh, CD, but I'll probably release some singles, I suppose, and uh, hopefully within the next couple of months, even. Um, but that last song kind of goes hand in hand with the song here and the one that I'm going to sing to you after this one, which will also be another new one. This is the title track from my most recent CD. It's called Them and Us. Because really, like I was saying, there's only two types of people living in the United States. Those who are them and those who are us. Except really and truly, we are all just one big us. All across the great divide With friends and family members On both sides Someone struck the match It would combust Scorching everyone Both them and us It's raining dirty words disrespect It's not having any positive effect Bridges have collapsed because of rust We can't reach each other them and us We've got 
are your plugs in and my blinders on and I wonder where have all the flowers gone where once there was a garden cool and lush all that's left here now is them and us and I've never felt so lonely in this world as I do when all those banners are unfurled and the airwaves are just spewing all that stuff about us and them look what it's done to us the differences are few and overblown This sometimes leads to punches being thrown There seems to be a few things to discuss but you can't say a word to them or us We write them off because of how they vote Write them off Cause they came on a boat We turn our backs With contempt And with disgust Every one of them Who isn't us We identify them by The clothes they wear we identify them by their skin and hair Then we look for any reason not to trust Whatever about them is not like us and I've never felt so lonely in this world All the wolves' banners are unfurled And the airwaves are just spewing all that stuff About us and them Look what it's done to us Thoughtful, decent people turning mean if only all our gods could intervene There must be some controls they could adjust Maybe they could make us whole them and us and I've never felt so lonely in this world As I do when all those banners are unfurled The airwaves are just spewing all that stuff About us and them Look what it's done to us There's a standoff all across The Great Divide Friends and family members On both sides As has been mentioned, there are links for purchasing CDs. If you're interested in doing that, you can get them directly from my website, chuckbrodsky.com. You can get digital downloads from bandcamp.com, and I know that the URLs have been put up for you. And that's a, a pay-whatever-you-want basis. And also want to let you know that I do a regular Sunday weekly live stream to Facebook at 2 p.m. Eastern and to my YouTube channel at 4 p.m. Eastern every Sunday. 
tomorrow will be my 20th uh, show. And I mix it up every week. I go way back to, uh, I've got 12 CDs out, so I go way back to the early days uh, with some of the material. Just make sure that I don't end up playing the same songs week after week. And you can find that on my uh, Facebook music page, not my personal page. And if you would like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, then you'll get a notification every time I go live. So here is uh, another new song that I hope to release in the next couple of months. Um, and it, like I said, it fits thematically with them and us and with half the people. Um, as I'm sure you have experienced for your own self, it's become absolutely impossible to have a discussion about politics with anybody that doesn't already agree with your viewpoint. And there's just no way in the world you're ever going to change anybody's mind by the powers of persuasion. All we do is butt heads. And personally, I have tried every imaginable approach. They all failed until I came up with this one. This one works, folks. Try this at home. After three or four tries, I poked out his eyes, and that's how I got him to see. To get him to hear, I screamed in his ear, and I gave him the third degree. I sharply berated him, I told him I hated him, I wasn't very kind. I shouted and cussed until I won his trust, well that's how I changed his mind. I shunned him, ignored him, I wouldn't look toward him, I only would give him my back. I accused him of lies, I would not compromise, I erased him after the fact. I was abrupt, I would often interrupt, we were volatile when combined. And in stating my case, I blew up in his face, and that's how I changed his mind. That's how I changed his mind That's how I changed his mind I blamed him, shamed him, insulted and inflamed him That's how I changed his mind Now this man was an ass I was gonna let him pass Let him take a wide berth of me but I was right and he was wrong Like I was telling him all along Trying to just get him to see But he's a this and I'm a that So we couldn't have a chat Of the friendly and civilized kind Round after round I just ground him down Well that's how I changed his mind That's how I changed his mind That's how I changed his mind Blamed him, ashamed him, insulted and inflamed him That's how I changed his mind I stumped on his toes and I punched him in the nose I was using irony So sure of the truth, I knocked out his tooth And I kicked him twice in the knee I won over his heart with a poisonous dart And he should have seen me unwind Being overly cruel and with ridicule Oh, that's how I changed his mind That's how I changed his mind That's how I changed his mind I blamed him, ashamed him, insulted and inflamed him That's how I changed his mind Works every time. So I called him a fool, challenged him to a duel, threw my white glove in his face. Twenty paces and I shot, and I must have hit the spot anyway. That's how I pleaded my case. Well, I won in the end, after making him bend, and after all the papers were signed. 
In the end, I won. Yeah, that's how it was done. Well, that's how I changed his mind. That's how I changed his mind. That's how I changed his mind. Blamed him, shamed him, I might have even maimed him. That's how I changed his mind. Yeah, I blamed him, shamed him, I might have even maimed him. That's how I changed his mind. 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 So one more song for you, then we'll have a very short intermission and a few announcements, and then I'll be back for a second set. Um, this is a song about Facebook and my Facebook friends. I was a late comer to the party. In fact, I had no interest in, the, in, in ever signing up for Facebook initially. <coughs> I had an ex-wife that was really into it who created a personal page and a musician page for me, even though I told her I wasn't interested. And they lay dormant for years, until I did a show with John McCutcheon in Atlanta, an all baseball song show. And John found out I was not on social media at the time and started giving me one of these. Not many people get away with giving me one of them. But John can. I, I really admire the man, and he steered me straight on a number of occasions, and he told me I needed to be on Facebook, and so I am on Facebook, and I have 5,000 friends. But I wrote this song when I only had 2,000, which was literally after one week of being on Facebook. Now, you might very well try to become a Facebook friend with me, when I've hit my limit, I, I hover around 5,000, which is the limit. Facebook won't let you have any more than 5,000 friends. So if you should try to become friends with me and it tells you that I cannot accept any more friends, come back the next day because people also unfriend me. Sometimes I sit here in the dark Just the light of the screen Maybe I don't get dressed a little more caffeine Sometimes I stay up late Time goes by I say what's on my mind And I hope forever ply I never stay away long I start missing all my friends I post my photographs They use my best glance Sometimes the comments never come Sometimes I sit and I wait Oh, won't you please like me? Is this someone who can relate? Nobody ever writes me letters I don't know why I have a phone Got a couple thousand friends now I don't feel so alone Sometimes I drop a line Sometimes they think of me too They want to know if I'm okay In just a sentence or two And I know who cooked Italian I know who got new shoes I know who had to pull a tranny Who's way on a cruise I know who got that dreaded letter I know who just switched shampoos I know who's using smiley faces And I know who's got the blues I know who likes what I know who's friends with who I know what everybody just did What they're planning to do I know who's having a birthday I know who just lost their job I know what rained in Sarasota for a little while and then it stopped. I found a lot of old classmates, people I once knew. Everybody went their own ways, as people these days will do. 
Some of them got wealthy And some are living hand to mouth Some of them are up north still Some have settled in the south All of my old flames got married Some they got divorced and of the ones who have fallen so never got back on the horse And the ones who did have children None of them look like me I hope that everybody's happy I hope that everybody's free I know who likes what I know who's friends with who I know what everybody just did what they're planning to do I know who just lost their father And has decided to adopt I know I read in Sarasota For a little while and then it stopped Prayers for my friend in Uganda My friends in Israel and Iran Nova Scotia, Ireland, and Denmark, Lithuania, and Japan. Well, I hope someday to meet them. Their place or mine. But for now, it makes me happy when I see them here online. And I know who got a puppy. I know whose rose bushes dying. And the ones who are ponies. Sometimes I tell them I can ride You know, I flirted with some women These days, how can you tell? Some of them could have been mad And then there was the time when Elvis Asked if he could be my friend I know who likes what I know who's friends with who I know what everybody just did What they're planning to do Who's fighting cancer? Sometimes I just start to sob. I know it rains in Sarasota. For a little while and then it stops. I know it rains in Sarasota. For a little while and then it stops. I know it rains in Sarasota. For a little while and then it stops. Got to have some applause, right? Yeah. We always got to have some applause. Got a little issue with the uh, internet. Are you feeling it there? No, Anybody? I'm oblivious. No. I'm just playing. Good. That's good. Okay. Um, that's one of the things that we we um, we work out during this time is who's using all the broadband. <laughs> um, and so, Chuck, I got to ask you. I was looking yep. at your website. Tell me about the Philadelphia Jewish Sports Hall of Fame. <laughs> what, what, what is that? Well, it's uh, primarily for athletes. Um, there have been some tremendous inductees, and, and last year I was among the inductees, which is a great honor. But, oh. uh, you know, we're talking about people that have been stars in professional sports, um, that have Philadelphia connections, either they were born and raised in Philadelphia or they were um, playing for or administrators or coaches for the Philadelphia teams. But um, they created a category in recent years for the arts. And oh. yeah. Wonderful. A school connection. And, and, um, yeah. Is this based on based on your on your music, obviously, on the, the songs? Yeah, primarily on the baseball songs. Yeah, cool. There's a there's a uh, spot on your website. Um, folks who haven't seen this already, it's been up on the screen, chuckbrodsky.com. There's um, be sure to check out Chuck's baseball page. Lots of uh, information there, and we've been putting up all the links to get the music. Couple of questions we had here though from Wally wants to know uh, something about a tribute. Can you read that? Oh, uh, all right. I can't. There, no, okay. I'm reading this. We'll try to get that up later. Can you read it out loud? 
I, I'm going to do my best, but I'm not sure if I can pronounce this. Kim, Kim. Ang oh, Ang. Ang. I don't. Yeah. I didn't want to mispronounce that. Yeah. Tribute to yeah. Kim Ang tonight. That was the question from Wally. Um, uh, the question was, was I planning on doing a tribute to her? I don't know. Those are the words. Tribute to Kim Ang tonight with a question mark. Oh, well, mark. hats off to her for sure. She she was just hired by the Miami Marlins as their general manager. And it's the first female ah. general manager in major professional sports in North America. So, and she's a fantastic choice. So hats yeah. off. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, and I guess that question is answered. Um but you don't have a did you live in philadelphia i did i did until there? i went off to college i was oh. born there and I, I graduated high school there and headed off to, to penn state and have not lived in philadelphia since good to know good to know people go off to penn state and they'd never return <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's all right, Wally. He says he's just looking for a comment, maybe a baseball song. I'm sure you're going to get plenty of baseball songs. Um, yeah. Well, I'm, folks are enjoying this. Um, I hope I hope uh, they're clicking on these links. We're going to come back in, in just a couple of minutes. I do have some messages I have to, to put out here tonight. So um, we'll be back in uh, just a couple of minutes. And one of the things I do want to uh, say first off is a thank you to WDIY 88.1 Lehigh Valley Public Radio. Thank them for sponsoring the Godfrey's Parlor Sessions. They're our media sponsor, a long-time relationship with WDIY. Make sure you tune in to Live from Godfrey Daniels on Tuesday nights from 7 to 9. You can find that uh, if you're in the Lehigh Valley, 88.1, and there are several other frequencies that you can you can uh, find that on. You can also stream it at WDIY.org. And big thanks to Dave Fry for keeping that show plugging along during these times when we, uh, he's been going through the archives and making sure that we have some fresh archived recordings for your listening ears. Uh, one other thing I want to mention here is um, the Godfrey's Gazette comes out once a week. We don't want you to miss anything. You can learn about all of the ups, upcoming live streams and other things other things happening at Godfrey's. Uh, go to the website, godfreydaniels.org, and click on that button that you see right there, the Godfrey's Gazette. Also, something very notable to mention, NEVA, National Independent Venue Association, hashtag Save Our Stages, and they have created, recently formed the National Independent Venue Foundation. And you can look that up and find ways to uh, donate to that if you're so inclined to maintain places for folks to play music once they are able to go back out and tour again. Um, tell you a little bit more later on, just a quick mention here about membership. Godfrey Daniels is membership supported, and we do encourage you to um, make sure that your membership is current, and if not, renewed, and if not, why don't you become a member soon. For over 40 years, Godfrey Daniels has been considered one of the best listening rooms in the country, where people come to appreciate live music and to celebrate a rare place where both the artist and the audience rise to the occasion. This reputation makes it possible for us to present legendary performers as well as emerging artists on their way to the top. Thanks to our members, volunteers, and the artists as well, we continue to evolve as a community resource with our successful monthly jams, open mic, storytelling, and youth outreach. Please consider supporting Godfrey's as a member. Your membership gift, along with those of other good friends, enables us to present some of the finest live music in the country. Just go to our website and click on the membership tab. It's that easy. Thank you. And there it is. It's that easy. All right. Welcome back, Chuck Brodsky. Thank you. The rest of uh, your show here today, folks, are hearing. And uh, I'm going to take myself out of here. Okay. It's all yours, Chuck. Okay. 
Well, I probably should mention that uh, I grew up with the old Main Point in Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania, um, a venue that is so similar to Godfrey's. It's just uncanny. It's the very same spirit behind it. And the first time I ever walked in the doors at Godfrey's, I felt like I was at the old main point. But I, I grew up going to shows there in my teens, and I worked there as a volunteer in uh, the last six months of the club before it shut down. So it's nice to see the continuum. Um, <clears throat> my ex-wife used to refer to my GPS as that other woman. Because first of all, she's set to a woman's voice. She's set to British Emily's voice. And I would phone home from the road when I was on long drives. And oftentimes in the middle of a conversation with my ex-wife, Emily would, of course, interrupt and bark out new orders. So uh, my ex-wife was fed up with her. And I ended up writing this song because of that. Other woman, says my wife, she's who you trust with your life. Listen to her more than you do me. I said, you just tell me where to go, but how to get there, you don't know. She never asks if we can stop and be. Yeah, I think that other gal knows best, north and south, east and west. I hardly pay attention anymore. In bed sometimes I hear her voice, pretty assembly. Not Australian Joyce. Now my dreams would take a little detour. Now once she told me to turn onto a dirt road, but all night long it had just snowed. Not even the highway had been plowed. Well, it did not turn, it was going straight. She kept saying, recalculate. And make a U-turn went loud. Well, sometimes we might disagree. All the while she yells at me. And then I yell back, well, shut her up. Call her a whore, call her a witch Call time out and I flip the switch For some peace and quiet She can't interrupt The satellite connection drop I pulled over and I stopped Spaghetti Junction was coming up ahead It's been years since I last had a map All spread out across my lap And I wish they wouldn't talk to me instead Rams to the left, rams to the right. There wasn't another soul in sight. It wasn't whizzing by at 75. And my teeth were clenched, and my knuckles white. That's when we had another big fight. She refused to say which way to drive. But sometimes we might disagree. All the while she yells at me. But then I yell back, well, shut her up. Call her a whore, call her a witch Call time out and flip the switch For some peace and quiet She can't interrupt well, Now one time when I drove all day Just one road a long, long way I got caught up in thinking As you do She froze to death I did not know I missed my exit hours ago And I never even saw her face turn blue like a lot of old songs, this one here has a bit of an adult verse. If you think that's something that might have said, you just hold your ears a minute. Well, I mount her and I turn her on. She tells me I'm her Don Juan and Weeds. Only my Emily can do. Oh, that's her out there in the car. The one who does know where we are. And it turns out all she needed was a screw. Sometimes we might disagree All the while she yells at me But then I yell back Well, shut her up the Phillips head Call her a whore Call her a witch Call time out and flip the switch For some peace and quiet She can't interrupt That other woman says My wife, she's who you trust With your life Listen to her more than you do me well, that's true, I do, cause she knows the root She's the one that has the mute She came with an extended warranty My British Emily So, uh, 
another subject that matters a lot to me that I have written quite a number of songs about is the Holocaust. So baseball and the Holocaust. And I will soon have enough songs to release an entire collection of the Holocaust songs. But this was the first one that I ever wrote. And it's about some braids that belonged to a little girl by the name of Lily Hirsch from Transylvania. Lily and her family were rounded up by the Nazis and sent to a concentration camp. But before the Nazis arrived, Lily's mother cut Lily's hair. She, she had grown her hair since birth, had never had it cut, and she had these beautiful braids. And Lily's mother knew that the Nazis would cut them off. And so she deprived them of, of being able to do that. She cut them off herself and she went to the next door neighbor's house and asked them to please watch after those braids until the family returned at the end of the war. Well, the family didn't return. The family was completely wiped out except for Lily's brother. And he did make it back to the family village the home had already been taken over by another family, but he went to the house next door and retrieved his sister's braids. So this is called Lily's Braids. The house he was born in was only next door. His country had vanished no more out in the garden some little boys played he had only come back to retrieve Lily's breeds the neighbors were home to the word they were true Kept them safe Like they said they would do Despite any orders They might have obeyed It was righteous of them To have kept Lily's braids Where it had come down Germans were near They had taken a village A few miles from here There was no place to run There was no place to hide It was no longer safe To be going outside Whispers of horrors What they did to the Jews Sorting into piles The clothing and shoes At the railway station Shaving their heads Then taking the hair Pillows and beds Lily's hair Had never been cut Curtains were drawn And the doors were shut It had hung to her knees Just moments before Braids would be safe with people next door. Lily's mother quietly prayed. She said, Come here, child, don't be afraid. 
promise you one day we'll pin them back on after the war when the soldiers are gone house he was born in His brother returned sometime after the war. They were all he had left. How heavy they weighed. Though maybe not as much now that he'd retrieve little his braids. Maybe not as much now. This next song has a fantastic story behind it. It's also a Holocaust-related story. It's about a fellow by the name of Adolfo Kaminsky, who during World War II was known as the Paris Forger. And perhaps you have read the book called A Forger's Life that his daughter Sarah Kaminsky wrote. But in case you haven't, I'll give you a little background to the story. When Adolfo was just in his late teens, he was working in the garment industry in Paris. And the partisan movement fighting the Nazis found out about him because he had quite the knowledge of inks and dyes and fabrics. He knew exactly what it took scientifically to cause certain inks and dyes to set in various fabrics and just as importantly, how to unset them. And the partisans determined that he would make the perfect forger of documents. So they recruited him. But the work was so secretive, he could not even tell his own wife or daughter. He had one single handler in the partisan movement that he was allowed to communicate with. He had to rent uh, a spare apartment a few blocks from where he actually lived. And he would go there every night and work all throughout the night. They would give him impossible orders like we need 200 passports forged by tomorrow morning well adolfo could do that he was able to forge 30 passports in an hour but then he realized for every hour he would sleep it would cost 30 people their lives and so he never slept he just worked until he would pass out and whenever he came to again on the floor he'd get right back to the job at hand and he would finish it for them and never failed to deliver and at the end of World War II, he didn't stop helping people with his forgery. He continued right until the end of the Vietnam War, helping people escape repressive regimes from all over the globe in all those ensuing years. At the age of 89, finally, Adolfo decided he didn't want to take this to the grave, and he told his daughter Sarah Kaminsky. And Sarah wrote that book I mentioned, A Forger's Life, which I read and turned into a song. So this is called The Forger. Up on the third floor I used to rent a room Got no fresh air You could get dizzy from the fumes I'd spend the nights in there Maybe I'd sleep a few weeks Clear a place somewhere Between the papers and the inks I had a printing press It was my Tommy gun I dreamed I'd ambush them Whenever it would run I couldn't shoot a man This was what I could do With my documents Guards would have waved them through I didn't know them I never met them But how could I turn away And just forget them Still can picture Some of their faces They 
you are desperate to leave for safer places. I was an artisan, a counterfeiter. I had a steady hand, but didn't get the jitters. One day the partisans told me my skills were needed. There was madness on the rise that had to be defeated. I doctored names, altered their ages, put a different place of birth upon the pages. I made them businessmen, I made them teachers, I made them someone else with all the same features. I didn't know them, I never met them, but how could I turn away and just forget them? Still can picture some of their faces, they were desperate to leave for safer places. Meet my handler in busy cafes. We would trade envelopes and go our separate ways. No time for small talk, too many lives at stake. Passports to reproduce. All night I'd be awake. I worked in secrecy. Nobody knew of this. Not even my daughter or my wife it was just too much risk. They said I worked too much. I couldn't tell them why. But now I have to tell someone before I die. I didn't know them. I never met them. How could I turn away and just forget them? Still can picture some of their faces. They were desperate to leave for safer places. I didn't know them. I never met them. But how could I turn away and just forget them? Still can picture some of their faces. So if this were a normal year, I would be in Harbor Springs, Michigan right now. Um, I would be at the Lamb's Retreat for Songwriters, which is a fantastic weekend. If you are a songwriter and you want to be challenged, that is a great place to go to get challenged. Everybody who attends, including the teachers, is given a songwriting assignment on the first day. Every assignment is unique. We all get different ones. We all hear them read out loud on the first day. And 48 hours later, your song is due. So today would have been the day that everybody sang their brand new songs for each other. And then uh, folks would have headed for home. This is a song that I wrote there as an assignment several years ago. The premise of it is that I was supposed to be at a a formal dinner ball setting and um, a woman comes up from behind me, taps me on the shoulder and asks me if I would like to dance. One 
certain girl I was hoping to meet But I've asked her to dance but from my two left feet She wasn't sitting with anyone else I was just sitting there all by myself I said, I didn't dance, I had two left feet To this other girl standing over me in my seat Besides, it really wasn't my kind of beat and This wasn't the girl I was hoping to meet I wasn't attracted, not on first glance She wouldn't go away, I didn't want to dance She lifted me up to my two left feet my eyes went for the girl I was hoping to be Well, I was thinking I should make a break for the door She pulled me out there onto the dance floor The band started in on an old-fashioned waltz She didn't lead and so it did by default It was awkward enough those very first steps I stepped on her right toes And then on her left A bleeding her eyes I tried to be discreet Even taps on the girl I was hoping to meet Well, her hand on my waist Made me relax She moved it up To the small of my back Touching the nerve I shot her a glance She said I thought she told me That she couldn't dance She pointed down At my right foot Gone to all the right places Wherever I'd put it She followed me When I spun her around When I dipped her All the way down The way her hair fell back Hung to the floor The way we locked eyes Then forevermore The thing about beauty And I don't know why but Sometimes you don't see it Until it pokes you in the eye One song ended And another began We exchanged names And applauded the band I guess I never did let go of her hand For the next couple hours Dance, then we dance Cause now we go out dancing every Saturday night She dresses up, boom, she was quite a sight This was the girl I didn't want to meet There was the guy with the two left feet So I'm going to play you two more songs here this first one, um, I wrote after being taken out for brunch by my cousin Jason Brodsky, who also lives here in Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, about five or six years ago, Jason took me out for my birthday for brunch. Told me as we sat down that just that very morning he had had an epiphany. And I said, oh, really, Jason? An epiphany, eh? Do tell. So he told me that he had just come to the realization only that morning that he no longer cared to be right about anything. He just wanted to be happy. And I thought, wow, what a powerful, beautiful birthday present that is to hear that on your birthday as you're about to start another whole loop around the sun. That's a great thing to keep in mind. So I went home that day and I wrote this song. It came through me in like an hour which is unheard of some songs take me weeks months years on two occasions they've taken decades so i thought after this came right through me like that i needed to sing it into my iphone and immediately email it to my cousin which i did and 20 minutes later i got a, a response back and it was just two words I thought it was going to be this glowing, beautiful email like, oh, this is just beyond incredible, man. You took what I said, and how could you have possibly done all that in an hour, right? In two words, very profound. Hope you like it. Hope you find it very profound. <laughs> Let 
accepted my prize I took first place A poor runner-up sad look on her face I didn't drink the champagne Left my ribbon there too Okay, so I won But what good did it do? Okay, so I won what good did it do? I stood with conviction I put up a fight For the truth as I saw it For peace, love, and light I fought off the darkness For the first round or two I got my licks in But what good did it do? I got my licks in What good did it do? And in the end I was right On further review All those things I was saying Proved to be true I got an admission An apology too In the end I was right what good did it do? In the end, I was right. What good did it do? Tried to live by my morals. I spoke my mind. Some friends got offended. One or two, they resigned. I was just being honest. They already knew. I just tried to remind them What good did it do? I tried to remind them What good did it do? And I could hold a grudge I could probably hold two And if I didn't learn to budge I could end up holding quite a few I didn't like being angry it's not enough being right I'd rather be happy That's a hard enough fight I'd rather be happy With all of my might Than to sit here and stew What good would it do To sit here and stew What good would it do I'd rather be happy Happy with you I want to thank you all very much for tuning in tonight being with me here in Asheville, North Carolina um, I have one last song for you and I just uh like to mention that if you're interested in picking up CDs, you can do so at my website, chuckbrodsky.com. You can uh, look through the chat window here, and you will see the URLs for where you can pick up digital downloads, my music at Bandcamp. If you're interested in becoming my patron at patreon.com, that would be awesome. Once again, I live stream every Sunday afternoon on my Facebook page, my Facebook music page at 2 p.m. Eastern. And I live stream to my YouTube channel at 4 p.m. Eastern on Sundays. Tomorrow will be my 20th show. So I'm going to finish off with the oldest song of mine that I still sing. I wrote this in 1981 after hitchhiking from the Belmont Avenue on-ramp of the Schuylkill Expressway all the way to San Francisco. It took me six and a half days. I had, um, my plan was to spend about two weeks there, turn around, hitchhike home. Uh, but uh, I was still there 15 years later. But I wrote this song the day that I got there. And it's developed quite a life of its own. It's been recorded by a number of people. Sarah Hickman has recorded it. 
Uh, Kathy Mateo recorded it in a film. The African Children's Choir of Uganda has recorded the song and lots and lots of other people as well. So again, thank you very much. Thanks to Godfrey Daniels for having me be part of this. And thank you, Dina. And I'll, I'll, I guess I'll stick around for a bit after. We'll see. <laughs> My ride that just pulled over And it sure was good to know you So go answer your calling Go and fill somebody's cup And if you see an angel falling Won't you stop and help them up? We are each other's angels And we meet when it is time We keep each other going And we show each other signs Sometimes you stumble Sometimes you just lie down Sometimes you'll get lonely With all these people around You might shiver when the wind blows And you might get blown away he might lose a little color You might lose a little faith We are each other's angels And we meet when it is time We keep each other going and we show each other signs So thank you for the water But I was gonna die out here in the desert But you quenched my thirst Let's break a little bread together Got a little mana It was a gift From someone who was passing by And offered me a lift we are each other's angels And we meet when it is time We keep each other going And we show each other signs Thanks for listening. Thanks so much, Chuck. You're welcome. It's been a wonderful, wonderful evening here. Thank you. Get myself my volume up a little bit. Um, you had some comments, you know, towards the end there. People are just so happy to be here. And um, uh, there was one <clears throat> that we, we took note of, uh, Ethan Thorpe saying, love, there's no Christmas. About um, being Jewish at Christmas? That I don't one? know. Well, I guess, I guess, yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so you've been you've been doing this for quite a few weeks now, quite a few months, right? You 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 said you're on your twentieth. Yeah, and... I took a couple of months to learn the ropes, read up about streaming, 
um, all the all the ins and outs before I ever tried to do it. So yeah. I think I have been doing it full time, well, weekly since late May, maybe mm -hmm. uh, beginning of June. So, so this is really a way to keep you keep you working. You know, you got to you got to keep keep working at your craft and keep plugging along from one step to the next, right? And pay the bills. And pay the bills. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Live streaming is all there is these days. There, I, I have, like I said, I got that little uh, really fortunate break um, to get to go to Denmark for about two weeks back in September. And those are really the only concerts I've played since March. Um, you so know, you, a couple of one-offs. So you flew to Denmark. I didn't know that we were actually uh, traveling internationally. Well, you're not guess, allowed to uh, as a tourist. I see. Um, it's only only work related, and I had to show contracts actually at the airport in ah. Washington D.C. before I could even board that flight overseas. Well, then yeah, that was truly fortunate for you. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, all right. Well, we're gonna say thanks so much and um, give everybody a, a happy, happy. We'll see you again in the future. Hopefully, not too far in the future, right? And um, I'll pop those those links back up here. Don't forget the the Patreon. That's very important. You're right. That's an ongoing stream for you. Ongoing revenue stream for you. Right. And any uh, the, the digital downloads right here are at Bandcamp. The physical CDs, you can go to Chuck's website to get those. And uh, the other things, they're in the comments. If you go through the comments, aside from the PayPal link, you go through the comments, you can actually link, uh, click on these, these other ones, the Venmo and Cash App as well. If you would like to pay what you will. And appreciation for this. All and right. I'd just like to thank everybody for their comments. I haven't been able to read them yet, but um, as soon as I sign off, I will read them all. So thank you for them. That's great. And uh, this will be archived. This will be on the Facebook, but it'll also be archived on the Godfrey Daniels YouTube channel. So you can watch it anytime you want. And Chuck, you can em embed that somewhere if you'd like as well. Yeah. All right, folks. And uh, we'll be, uh, we'll be back here. We'll see y'all soon. Thanks, Rob and Drew, and Susan, and Wally, Ethan, Jody, look at that, and I saw Josh way up at the top. Good night, everybody, and uh, y'all have a good, a good evening, and we'll talk to you everybody. soon. Thanks. Thanks, everybody, for, for hanging out with us once again tonight. And I just want to let you know what's upcoming next. Uh, next one, uh, next live stream we have a parlor session is Peter Carp on November twenty first. Also, this is just added Todd Wolf and Carla Olson, and that's on December third. And then moving, jumping up ahead to December eleventh, Claudia Schmidt, right here on our parlor sessions. All right. Once again, I just want you all to take note and say thanks to WDIY 88.1 Lehigh Valley Public Radio. Many choices, real voices. WDIY.org. Thanks so much for their assistance. And we will uh, we'll be back with you sometime soon. Thanks. <laughs>